Okay, it looks like we're ready to get started here. So hi, everyone. Welcome. Um, thank you so much for being here. I'm so excited to welcome you all today to our inspiration event and the closing event of our Eco Summit. Um, so without further ado, I'll pass it to Ryan Diamond, uh, co-executive director of Eco Schools to start us off. Thanks, Ryan. Thanks so much, Renee. Uh, hello, everyone. Good morning. Good afternoon. Welcome to our closing event for this year's Eco Summit. Bonjour tout le monde et bienvenue à notre événement de clôture de l'Eco Summit de cette année. My name is Ryan Diamond and I'm the co-executive director at Eco Schools Canada. Eco Schools is a national charity that supports youth leadership, environmental learning, and climate action. With staff and volunteers located from coast to coast to coast on both unceded and occupied territories, we recognize the historical and ongoing injustices of colonialism on First Nations, Inuit, and Métis peoples. We are dedicated to continually develop our personal and organizational role and responsibilities to reconciliation, to support the 94 calls to action, and to integrate Indigenous perspectives and voices into our programming. As an organization, we aim to engage, support, honor, and celebrate diverse cultures, voices, perspectives, and communities across Turtle Island. We are committed to learning and unlearning by connecting our work to broader projects of social justice, inclusion, and reconciliation. As part of a growing network of schools and partners, we will continue to encourage this reflection, growth, and practice with the communities that we serve. Over the past three weeks, we have had the pleasure of hearing from leaders and experts in the fields of low carbon commuting, outdoor learning, waste reduction, and climate action. All of these presentations are available on our website and YouTube channel, so feel free to view these recordings in your classroom, your office, or at home anytime. I'd like to thank our sponsors at National Resources Canada and General Motors Canada for making this three-week hybrid event possible and available for free to everyone. When we started planning this event many months ago, we felt it was essential to ensure the voices of the students participating in our program were heard. Ultimately, the work we do begins and ends with student success. And today, we are very excited to hear from some of the leading youth voices in our community. Over the next hour, we will introduce the eco teams from three of our platinum schools, as well as members of our Youth Advisory Council. And if you are representing an eco team today, please feel free to share the name of your school, your eco team, and where you're viewing from uh, in the chat. After the presentations today, please stay online as you will have a chance to ask questions directly to the students. As our certification deadline creeps up on us, it is worth reflecting on the success our schools have had last year. As a national community, Eco Schools completed over 14,000 actions, including planting pollinator gardens, reducing harmful single use plastics, and optimizing heating and cooling at their schools. This year, the numbers look even bigger, with more schools joining our program and some of our previous schools returning after several years of COVID restrictions. But our program is not just about our collective achievements and telling the story of environmental learning and action in Canada. By offering our stage today to this group of extraordinary youth, we wanted to showcase these inspiring leaders and take a closer look at their secret sauce, the magical ingredients that have transformed a group of individuals into a fully charged electric team of eco warriors. If you are a student viewing this from your classroom or at home, we want you to know that making this kind of impact at your school is possible, whether you are just planning your first action or have been certifying with us for years. The energy and effort you put in are essential to ensuring a healthy, just, and biodiverse planet. And we can't wait to see what you will accomplish. I'd now like to introduce Frederic Gay, our bilingual program coordinator, who will introduce our first eco team of the day. Hello, everyone. Bonjour tout le monde. My name is Frédéric Gay, and I'm the bilingual uh, program coordinator at EcoSchool. Donc, je suis la coordinatrice bilingue de programme chez Eco Ecole Canada. I will be presenting the inspiring eco team that are going to present today. Uh, so we're just going to go right uh, and dive into it. Uh, so just one second here. So today, the first eco team that we are so delighted uh, delighted to introduce is James Morden Public School from the District School Board of Niagara in Ontario. So at James Morden Public School, students have worked hard to take actions towards the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. 
as a school community, they started a whole school composting, uh, co composting system, grew indoors with hydroponics, and started the Jam Fam Roots Garden Collective. Four student eco club leaders, David, Harry, Sophie, and Samia, along with Mrs. T, will share their experiences taking environmental action at James Morden. They will further discuss the importance of community engagement and partnership. These James Morden eco leaders hope to inspire other individuals and schools to take action towards global issues through local projects. I will now pass the mic to you, James Morden. Hello, I'm just going to share my screen here. Okay. Hello, everyone. Fun to be here and present everything that we have on the go. Um, okay, so at James Morton Public School, we have been working very hard towards the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals through our actions last year. We certified as a platinum eco school. My students are going to tell you about how we took action towards zero hunger, good health and well being, reducing inequalities, sustainable cities and communities, responsible consumption and production, and climate action. Uh, for me, a big issue uh, I see in our community is food insecurity. So I'm doing a presentation. The issue of food insecurity has skyrocketed ever since COVID-19 has uh, hit Canada. Uh, the food bank access rate has uh, gone high up and 33% of those who visit food bank are children. So in order to prevent that, we've built a community garden so we can give back to our community and also reduce the need to import slash export food, which will use vehicle that harm our environment. Here at James Morton, we've also been using hydroponics to grow plants. And hydroponics are really cool and good because they allow plants to grow with no soil and they have a more efficient use of land because you can stack the hydroponics as well as they don't rely on the weather. So you don't have to care if it's dry outside, if it's rainy outside, and it doesn't need natural sunlight. So you can control how the plants grow, how, how long they grow for and all of that. You also don't need pesticides because it's indoors and there's not much nutrients lost. Oh, one more. Oh, and we also have salad days at our schools using the hydroponic plants. Can you maybe move a little closer? In our school, we compost and work towards responsible consumption and production of food and climate action. We learned that organic food in landfills produce methane gas, a gas which is a powerful greenhouse gas that contributes to climate exchange. Grade five to eight students at our school runs the compost room. We have three main compost systems. Most of our compost goes to the backyard composter where it breaks down and can be used for a garden. Some of our compost goes to the Niagara Region curbside program. We also use an electric food cycler that breaks down the food into plant fertilizer. Oh, sorry. Thank you to Whole Kids Foundation and TD Funds of the Environment Grant. Our school was able to build a large outside garden called the Jam Farm Roots Garden. In our school, we planted many apple fruits and vegetables. We planted tomatoes, white flank corn, lettuce, beans, beans, squash, potatoes, carrots, and kale. We we use our fresh fruits and vegetables to cook. For, for example, we plant we planned a recipe and made a garden soup that follows the Canada Canada's Healthy Food Guide. Okay. Okay. Last year, we truly saw the impact of our actions. We added a small pollinator garden next to the edible garden and observed bees and monarch butterflies. This was truly special since last year, monarch butterflies were identified as endangered due to deforestation. 
This year, we continue all of these actions at James Morden Public School. Currently, we are using our TD Friends of the Environment grant to expand our outdoor garden, where we'll be adding a larger pollinator garden and also um, more edible uh, plants. We, we have a few more uh, garden beds coming. We're also going to be adding the addition of some uh, fruit trees. Through these actions, we cannot stress enough the importance of community partnerships. We have connected with many local organizations such as Grove Community Food Literacy Center, our local high school, West Lane, the Niagara Region Recycling Facility, Heartland Forest and United Way. We hope this presentation inspires you to take action towards the UN SDGs and connecting with your local community. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, James Morden Public School. I definitely feel extremely inspired by all your community engagement and this soup looks so amazing. It makes me a little hungry. Uh, thank you again for your time. So oh yeah, thank you. Um, so joining us as well from Ontario, we have a second school, a second eco team presenting today. So joining us from Ontario, the Richmond Green Secondary Schools eco team is made up of a wide variety of students in grades nine to 12. It was founded by Miss Cindy SM1 in 2007. She has been a teacher in York Region District School Board for over 15 years and is the staff advisor of the Eco Team. The Eco Team has won numerous awards, including the Platinum Level Eco School Canada status. Valentina is the current Eco Team president. Olivia and Shane are the co vice presidents, and Melissa is the secretary. So they hope you enjoy hearing about their waste reduction projects. I will pass it to you, Richmond Green Secondary School. Can everybody see your screen? Yes. I assume so. And can everybody hear us? Yes, we can. Okay, thank you very much. So. We are Richmond Green Secondary School, and we're secondary school under York Region District School Board. My name is Valentina. My name is Olivia. I'm Shane. I'm Melissa. Ms. Juan. So for today, we will be sharing multiple different actions that are related to waste reduction. Starting off is our scavenger hunt. So every single year during Take Me Outside Day, we plan a scavenger hunt with like different items ranging from sunflowers, dandelions, to even four leaf clovers for different students to find and check off the list. And meanwhile, we also ask them to pick up any trash they find around the campus or like the grounds, and then that will help clean up our place. We also, every single year, we do a WWF fundraising and we've done more than 10 over the past few, no, past many years throughout um, our eco team. And throughout this fundraiser, we make our own handmade crafts out of recycled materials and reuse materials to raise funds to do a symbolic adoption. And this year, during the winter, we did a Beluga fundraiser. And we also have a waste-free lunch campaign. Essentially, we encourage different students to use their waste-free containers, and then they take a picture, and then they submit it to a form, and then we did a raffle. So whoever like, was picked, they would get a prize. And I believe it was reusable straws that Shane here has prepared last year. So for the hydroponics, we got to grow a variety of different herbs and crops, such as lettuce, cherry tomatoes, and um, basil, those types of herbs. And so Eco Team students mentored other students in science, math, special education, community class students um, to uh, grow plants. And we tried to uh, reduce waste reduction by creating reusable um, pods for the plants as well. Oh, so um, we also do outdoor cleanups. And uh, during our outdoor cleanups, we pick up uh, waste and litter on the school grounds and community. 
We also mulch and weed the gardens and compost those materials. All right, and so next is an activity we did. Um, we designed our own endangered species bingo card to raise awareness for endangered species. So we have a prompt um, shown like on the right, and the students would have to guess if that prompt relates to the animal on their card. So it was just a fun little activity. And um, it was great because we had a whole club engagement and it was all done electronically because as our eco team, we don't use any regular paper. It's always goose paper or electronics to try to reduce waste. And our students did learn a lot about endangered species with this activity. Another activity that we started this year was called Farmer's Market. So essentially students were able to bring in any leftover fruits or veggies or seeds that they had grown at home. And it's a great way to reduce waste to make sure uh, everything is going to use. So students are able to bring these in, trade with each other, learn about new plants and uh, different gardening techniques. And we hope to do this again another time to increase participation. So our eco team has uh, been involved with other community organizations. We've collaborated with the city of Richmond Hill uh, to raise awareness about waste uh, and diversion and proper disposal. We put up posters. And uh, our students also collaborated with the Richmond Hill, Richmond Green Branch Public Library. They collected articles and they made up the trunk of a pledge tree using those articles. Then in-person pledges were taken and we've transformed this recently into a digital tree where uh, students uh, found electronic articles and used social media such as Instagram to collect pledges. So um, you can think about what is your pledge to the environment, and you can use Jamboard, for example, to collect the pledges. In the past, we have also made eco-friendly bags using upcycled t-shirts. Uh, we've had clothing drives, and also we've made paper uh, using shredded paper in the school. Students have made coffee sleeve notebooks using good on one side paper. Um, they've made gift bags. And we've also made goose boxes, good on one side paper boxes that were placed in all rooms in the, inside the school. We've used the goose paper to do origami and we've sold the origami products for fundraising. We've also sold our goose notebooks uh, for fundraising as well. Our team was featured in a National Goose Paper Day video that will be played shortly. And we acknowledge uh, these partner community partners for their wonderful collaborations. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Richmond uh, School. I think we'll be sharing the link to the Goose video in the chat. So Renee, if you can support with that, that'd be awesome. Uh, thank you so much for sharing your inspiring uh, initiative, especially I really enjoyed the Eco Tree Pledge and the origami with the Goose paper. It's really inspiring. Thank you so much for this. And for now, we'll be presenting the third eco team, another inspiring eco team. So the third eco team joining us from Quebec today is the Elizabeth Ballantyne Elementary School from English Montreal School Board. The eco team is made up of grade four and five students. We have Shanae, Anwita, Mika, Ella, Sophie, Juliette, Anastasia, Gia, Kiara, Sky, and Charles that are enthusiastic team members of the school. The team decided on a question of how do you grow food? And more importantly, how do you grow food at school? The question opened up the project that filled the team with exploration, community connection, and an authentic learning experience. The students now understand and have an appreciation of how food is grown, and they will share about this. So, um, Elizabeth Ballantyne, sharing the mic to you. Hello, Eco Schools, and thanks for having us. Uh, do you guys want to say anything? No. Hello. Hi. Hi. Bye. We're excited. Hello. Thanks for having us uh, all the way from Quebec. And here we are to share our presentation. So, let me go ahead. Let's go. 
Okay, so our project began with how to grow food. We were really interested to see what efforts and resources we needed to grow food, and more importantly, in a school, because we are currently located in an urban area. Um, so we needed to decide how we could grow food and then being restricted to what our school looks like. So this is what we did. Uh, please enjoy our presentation. It's all pre-recorded, so uh, thank you. Hello, my name is Shanae. I'm a team member of the green team, Elizabeth Valentine Elementary. Our school is part of the English Montreal School Board and located in Montreal West, Quebec. And our school is the Eagle School. We are so excited to share with you our city farming project and how much fun it has been. Please enjoy the short presentation. Hey, what did she get a dancing captain? This is our team members. Some of them are not here, but some are here. We're here to lighten the mood and, uh, and share our fun that we had about this project. Hello, my name is Gia. Our school's motto is Sapir Adu, which means dare to know. And this is what we did in our green tea project. We wanted to know more about how plants grow and food and how you grow it at our school. Lots of questions, right? How do you dare to know? So we needed some help from the experts. So this is Jane Barr. She is a community member in our uh, neighborhood of Montreal West, Quebec. Um, and Jane is an expert gardener. She's grown lots of things. And she was a valuable resource for us and our project. So the students have uh, formed a, a bond, a relationship with Jane. We visited her garden in the fall. Um, and here's more. <laughs> So this is our, our visit, and Mika described the fun experience of tasting kale, eating Jane's uh, apples from her garden in the cake. Um, so this was a great experience, and this opened our eyes to the possibilities of growing food and then applying that to our school setting. As you can tell, our students are very excited and happy to share you our project. So when we discovered Jane's garden, what we had at our school was a problem because students are away during summer, we are situated under a lot of shade from trees. Our schoolyard is covered in a small blanket of snow still today, right guys? Yes. Yeah. yes, and that's a lot of period being in Quebec. And also we don't have any water access. So we need to find water to get to the plants. And then a big, big part is asphalt. Our schoolyard is covered in a lot of asphalt or pavement, we like to say. So this is a restriction um, to growing food at our school. So we had to look at some uh, options and this is what we came up with. My name is Sky. This is our school's nutri tower. It's a vertical hydroponic growing system. We can grow 32 plants all year round, even in the winter. And we don't need a lot of space either. The bright lights in the center provide optimal light exposure for the plants to grow. Water cycles through the system by a pump in the bucket. Uh, we add nutrients to the water to help supply plants with their needed food source. Pretty cool, right? Sky with our great demonstration of our school's nutri tower. We actually have three towers. We're going to get the third one operational this week. And uh, yeah, this was our answer to how do we grow food at school. So nutri towers provide us all the benefits of growing food in a school system because we don't have to worry about shade, snow, pavement or asphalt, access to water or the summer holidays because no one can get to them. So this is what we've utilized as our resource to grow food until we can locate and find a better way to grow food outside. So just a quick thing about starting our nutri tower, we had to plant the seeds into cocoa pods because of it being a hydroponic system. And then we had to set up the system, which has been a lot of fun. Maintaining the system, you need to fill the bucket up with water, add your nutrients, just like Sky mentioned checking and observing the growth, and then monitoring and be patient for the harvest, which we are looking forward to ourselves. Hello, 
my name is Kiara. We are really excited with what we have experienced and we wanted to share it with Jane. So we invited her to see and taste from our nature tower. Here we have kale, basil, and dill. Jane's favorite was basil. But which one's your favorite? As Kiara mentioned, we had some really nice plants so far and we're going to expect a lot more. So we invited Jane because Jane doesn't use hydroponics. So we wanted to do a Q&A session with her and just share that connection. So the students had a great time demonstrating hydroponic growing and then answering any questions that Jane had. And as Kiara mentioned, Jane's favorite was? Basil. Basil, Basil. thank you. Hello, my name is Anvita. We had a great experience with this project, but it took some patience and some learning. The school was closed for three weeks over the holidays, so the plants did not survive. We found we found this out the hard way. We, we loved eating the foods we grew and now appreciate how much time, effort, and resources goes into the process. I hope we inspired you to uh, do the same at your school. Thank you, Anvita. Yes, we had some hard times um, losing our plants during summer, uh, during the, the holidays. Uh, we weren't here for two weeks to water them or add water, so we lost them. That was a big learning experience for us and one of the restrictions. Um, during this process, we discussed and looked over uh, three sustainable uh, United Nations goals, um, honing in on these three specifically, and then uh, going to expand upon with zero hunger in the future. My name is Juliet, and this here is Ella. Thank you for watching our presentation. We had so much fun sharing our learning experience with you. Our project is to also help other schools create some of our projects to what we have done. We would like to hear and see what you grew at your school. Happy spring growing, everyone. So that's Ella and Juliet wrapping up our project here. And, and with that, we want to say a big thank you for listening. And we hope to hear from you if you have similar projects to us. OK, thank you so much, everyone. I'm Clara from the EcoSchools Canada team. And on behalf of EcoSchools, and I think I can say everyone here today, thank you so much to all of the Eco teams for sharing your amazing work with us. We truly appreciate it. And we hope the audience is inspired to take action in your own schools and communities. So we will now be taking questions for any of the Eco teams who just pre presented. Um, if you have any questions, please add them to the Q&A box now. Um, I've been taking some that have been coming in directly in the chat, um, and we'll answer as many as we can in the next 10 minutes. Um, also, before we get into the questions, just a reminder to everyone to please stick around uh, after our question period, because we have a short closing presentation from two of our EcoSchools Youth Advisory Committee members that you don't want to miss. Uh, so with that, uh, we'll get into our questions. And once again, I'm encouraging everyone to add any you have uh, to the Q&A box. Um, if you have any trouble finding that, you can add them directly to the webinar chat. So our first question um, is for James Morden Public School. Um, and we were asking if you have any tips for schools for finding strong community partners and how to approach them, since this is something that you pointed out as a important uh, step in, in your eco schools and environmental projects. Hello. I only have two of my friends here right now because two had to get to their other class, but I think they're watching virtually. Um, so one of the biggest tips that I think we have is just if you see a community partner that maybe aligns with something that you're doing, um, don't be afraid to send them an email. I know it can seem kind of risky, but uh, it's definitely worth it. I feel like most people I've reached out to have always been more than willing to somehow connect with us in some capacity. 
So I know I found I found some of our community partners just through student projects. Um, we've emailed a couple community partners recently for their they're working on their young reporters of the environment contest. So sometimes it comes from student generated projects. Um, but definitely reaching out also to different organizations if they have grants available. Uh, that's really helped us quite a bit um, to say to a community partner, we have this funding, is there a way that you can then help us? Um, so kind of having that extra amount of money definitely supports that partnership, so. Great, thank you so much. That's wonderful advice. Um, so we do have another question for James Morden in the chat, but I, I'll just go and ask one to another one of the ECO teams, um, just so everyone gets a chance to uh, answer a question. So uh, this is for uh, Richmond Green Secondary School, and the question is, any tips to for getting your whole school involved in your actions? It sounds like you had really great variety of actions and lots of experience in your team. So mostly you can like collaborate with other clubs, first of all. So like if there's something that your team has lacking, sometimes they have a wider audience as well. But mainly we do a lot of announcements and lots of like posters and Instagram, Instagram like social media posts, like letting them know. And to add on, like mainly posters, like on the like two or three weeks in advance and like saying, okay, we're going to have this event here. And then we just welcome everybody to come and participate. So if you're interested, go ahead. And we yeah. also um, publish in school newsletters about up upcoming events. So if anyone's interested, they can mark it down in their calendars. Yep. And we choose specific days like National Sweater Day or Earth Hour, Earth Day, um, like the nationally recognized um, like environmental uh, holidays, just so it's um, the whole school like knows about it and they get involved. It's easier for them to get involved when it's a holiday. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, those are great suggestions for any school looking to involve the wider community or wider school community, especially. Um, we know that public putting posters in public places and, and getting the word out is uh, always successful. And the suggestion to involve other clubs uh, is a great one. So um, we'll move on and uh, we have a question here as well for uh, Elizabeth Ballantyne School. Uh, the question is, what is one thing you learn through your projects that you think um, other students would like to learn as well? Anyone wanna answer that question? Uh, Sky? Well, I don't really know. What did you learn from plants and using a pause? Well, Oh, we had it to bury in the Yeah. Um, okay. Well, we already know. We have to use rocks. Well, wait. I learned. Show me the rock. I learned that that I thought you could only like have plants like from outdoors, but turns out you could do from like a nature tower too. Yeah. Okay. Amazing. Yeah, that's a great learning. The uh, indoor uh, growing plants indoors is a really exciting thing to learn about, and especially in a system like uh, a Nutra Tower. So thank you, um, the eco team of Elizabeth Valentine for that uh, insight. Okay, so let me just check the chat here um, for some more questions. Uh, we have a question um, for uh, from Eugene for James Morden asking, how do you source the materials for the Nutra Tower? Do you mean um, like where do we get the materials, like the seeds for the Nutra Tower? I'm not can sure, Eugene, you can clarify that in, in the chat. It sounds like um, maybe they're looking to know the seeds if you could speak to the seeds to start with sure. we yes <laughs> okay oh structural so, materials like the nutra tower itself um I yeah the nutra tower itself we were very fortunate our school board rolled out um that product and so uh ego schools has a great um partnership with nutra towers so uh I know that our board jumped on that and we have quite a few 
in our whole school board. Um, oh, there's the link there. So uh, yeah, they've been great to work with so far. Um, and yeah, like this, it came with a lot of the seeds that we started with, but from there we've ordered different seeds from West Coast Seeds, um, our Eco Club, we made a yeah. wish list. Wish list to the um, United Way. United Way. Yeah. And um, last year we got space seeds from NAS. Oh yes, we uh we actually participate in the tomato sphere program, so we use some of those seeds as well. But yeah, the Nutri Tower itself was ordered through uh, the Eco Schools program. Fantastic, and thanks uh, to Emily from our team for sharing that link in the chat. So if anyone wants to check that out, please feel free. Um, okay, and. Um, actually, we have a question uh, for James Morton, if you don't mind coming back on from uh, from a co eco team uh, that we heard from today, Elizabeth Valentine, asking how did you start your waste free lunches? Oh, I think that might have been the um, other school actually. We didn't talk too much about waste free lunches. So oh, okay, okay. so yeah. maybe a that question. Yep. So I think that might be for Richmond Green Secondary School. Okay, so we actually started off with another campaign. We started off with single use plastics and like alternatives. So on our social media, we would post nine days, I think nine days every other day where we mentioned like, instead of using a plastic fork, you should use what you should use. Or instead of using styrofoam, you should use this. And then that extended on to our waste-free lunches. So we hosted a campaign with like posters and we mentioned on our social media that on the day or like that week, I believe, you could like post or upload your picture of your waste-free lunch and like no waste or anything. And those containers, reusable containers, you would be um, put into a raffle. And then essentially we would pick a winner at the end of the week it's really important to like let people know what alternatives you have like instead of doing this what you should do because if you just say don't use like plastic then okay what's the alternative i don't know how to do it so then you need to give them ideas on how to continue on and also we ended up i believe uh, shane designed a poster that's posted in front of the guidance counselor office to encourage people to not ask for plastic spoons forks when they forget to bring those and encourage them to actually bring their own containers or like utensils to school to do that kind of thing. Anything to add for me? Okay, thank you so much. Um, those are great tips. It sounds like starting small, uh, maybe first with just a uh, focusing on one item um, and giving some tips for practical alternatives. Thank you so much. Um, so I think we have time for one more question. Um, so uh, let's see here. Um, maybe we can ask this final question to uh, Elizabeth Valentine if you're still on the call. So do you have um, a secret ingredient or secret sauce that makes your eco team successful? So is there anything that you think um, really makes you work well together? If the Elizabeth Valentine group is occupied at the moment, um, maybe we can pass that last question on to James Morden. Do you have any um, final thoughts there? Or if, any, if um, all the teams wanna give a qu quick uh, answer to that question. Okay. Sure. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Our secret sauce is working together, Eco Club, and the SDG right up there. And so we we kind of talked real quick when we heard the question. Um, I think one of the things it kind of connects to one of the responses in the previous questions. We do try very hard to have whole school projects going on at James Morden. Um, so trying to get the whole school involved with the Great Gulp was one of our recent ones that we did yesterday. Um, 
We have seed starter kits that go out to our whole school when it's gardening season. Um, and, and a big, who's one of the biggest leaders for that though, is our uh, uh, people leader that yeah, our at, club. A club. Mm -hmm. club. And we did, just did the Great Crunch like a week ago. The Great Crunch? Yeah. yeah. With the whole school, right? Yeah. Yeah. You all crunch at the same time with the apple. Yeah. Yeah. And we, we try very hard to um, make the whole school aware of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. I know I use them a lot instructionally myself. Did you have anything else, Sophie, you wanted to add? No? Okay. <laughs> Okay, thank you so much. Great to hear from you, uh, James Morden, Eco Team. So I'll pass it over to, uh, I think Richmond Green is ready to go. Yeah, so I'd like to actually share a little bit about that. I think one of the secret sauces that we have is like being creative and really thinking outside of the box. So there was an action within the application, what's called, which is called um, a Canadian Species at Risk last year. And then that was like sitting down and was thinking like, okay, how can I make this fun and interactive? Because you don't want just for people to see the information and not participate or like engage with it. So around that time, it was around like Easter. So there was like also, you know, like chocolates, egg hunts. So I was like, okay, so why not merge the idea of doing an egg hunt with Canadian species at risk? So within those eggs, we actually place like fun facts about different Canadian species at risk. And you were to also like have the clues. We had like a clues and then you had to match them with like the animals. So like we had a wall with different animals and you were like, okay, this clue seems like this one. And if you were right, then you would get a point. So really thinking outside the box, incorporating things you love. So let's say you like, making paper, paper airplanes. So maybe goose paper, paper airplanes and add those together to make that kind of activity. It doesn't have to be something traditional. It can be anything outside of the box, anything that you love to do and just want to add like an eco team twist to it. So that's just like engaging on that different action. And then we also had eco tip Thursdays, which I believe we should have. Yes, yeah, so another thing I want to mention, Eco Tip Thursday, it's on our social media. So every Thursday, we would have an um, environmental tip um, talking about how you can change your own lifestyle habits. And we like to do things that are relevant to the current times. Um, so this was back in the COVID era. We would say, if you're using the, the, um, the plastic masks, make sure to cut off the strings, um, dispose them separately, because we did see a lot of animals getting stuck within the like the mass strings. And so we want to be informative um, to our like students, to our school about how you can keep track of like current climate and what's currently affecting us. Yeah. The neat thing about environment and ecology is that it is multidisciplinary and everything connects to everything. So um, it's um, easy now that we have Google to search up different activities that you can find that are more interactive. Thank you for those thoughtful responses, uh, Richmond Green Secondary. Uh, that Those are great ideas and so inspiring. With that, I think we need to pass it over to our um, wonderful uh, Youth Advisory Committee members. So um, first of all, I'm just going to introduce them. Uh, thank you for all of your great questions to everyone. And once again, to the eco teams per, for presenting your thoughtful and inspiring answers. So uh, we are now going to present Erica Chong and Maya Grabowski, who I will introduce. So Maya is a passionate high school student, heavily involved in entrepreneurship, local theater, volunteering, and student council. She has a deep care for the environment and helping to achieve a sustainable future. And Erica is a high school student who is passionate about environmental sustainability. In her spare time, she enjoys writing, playing the piano, and getting involved in her community. So throughout the course of their presentation, Maya and Erica will recap last month's myriad of presentations, as well as provide insight into the importance of caring for the land. Please go ahead, Maya and Erica. As we reach the end of the 2023 Eco Summit, we would like to reflect on everything that we learned. But first, let us introduce ourselves. We'll start off with my friend Maya. My name is Maya Grabowski, and I'm a member of the Eco Schools Youth Advisory 
Committee. I'm a ninth grader in the International Baccalaureate IB program. I love reading, writing, acting, art, business, and volunteering time to my community. Now I'll pass the mic back to Erica. Thanks, Maya. My name is Erica Chong, and I'm also a member of the Eco Schools Youth Advisory Committee. I enjoy reading, writing, playing the piano, and contributing to my community. That's awesome. Can you tell us a bit about the YAC? Sure. The YAC is made up of passionate high school students who are working towards climate action and environmental justice. Through monthly meetings, Instagram takeovers, blog posts, and participating in events like this, we hope to inspire a new generation of climate activists. We will now recap the Eco Summit. It kicked off with a keynote address from Ms. Nikki Sanchez, where she spoke on the small scale, big impact ways to address environmentalism daily. I think I speak for everyone when I say the webinar was jaw dropping and I felt a bit wiser as I closed my computer. We then tuned in for Eco School's daily educational webinars addressing this year's Eco Summit themes of outdoor learning, waste reduction, climate action, and low carbon commuting. On March 10th, we learned about advances in green transportation and low carbon commuting school initiatives from experts and change makers at the low carbon commuting panel. It was so wonderful to hear about the progress being made towards sustainable transportation. And today, we heard some inspiring stories and innovative tips from eco schools nationwide. The inspiration event is meant to inspire young climate activists and even older generations to strive for environmental justice and environmental action. All the eco schools that presented have done an ex exceptional job of addressing both these issues. I am shocked by all their wonderful accomplishments. To all the children who presented today, you should be so very proud of all that you've done for our earth. Yes, great job everyone, and thank you for making a difference. Moving on, Maya and I will share a few pieces that inspire us. There is an Aboriginal proverb that is common among the Nyamal peoples of the North Pilbara region in Western Australia, and was first publicly released by the female elder by the name of Doris Eaton. The quote is, destroy the land and the land will destroy you. As you all know, our world is often disrespected and used to fill the pockets of those in power. But as more people realize their faults and strive for change, our earth is slowly healing. To honor our earth's resilience and beauty, I have selected a few experts from a spoken word poem anonymously published on Digital Poet. The link has been attached in the chat section of the meeting for anyone who wishes to read the full poem. Let me tell you a story, a story about three little children. Their names were Present, Earth, and Future. Present was a kind and true-hearted child, his mind filled with dreams and ambitions quite wild. Present saw time machines and flying cars, and he worked hard to achieve it all. But present, he was ignorant. Present was drowned in waves of applause and gratitude, worrying only about the piles of money leading to more fame, more cash, more gain. Eyes covered in sunglasses that instead of blocking out UV light, allowed only sources of money to come into sight. Standing on a pedestal high above anybody else, his ego soaring and his selfishness even higher, unable to see the damage being done to the creatures down below or in the sea, mind clouded with big companies and even bigger machines, demolishing forests and polluting the marines. Will hurts. Will hurts, but present won't see, as present is far too deep in finding ways to make more money and advancing technology. Now don't tell me it was worth it. Earth. Earth was like a mother. She nurtured the children of others as though they were her own. Earth planted seeds in the ground and circled around to make sure they were safe. And the plants grew. They grew because Earth knew that if she protected life as it was, allowed blossoms to bud and bees to fly free, gave homes to creatures in the sea, from fish to whales, from sea urchins to snails, Earth gave them food. She gave them a place to grow and a place to go if they ever needed to move. All animals and plants could see that earth suffered if they did. Earth stood with every creature and every plant, no matter how tough the ride got. They could see that earth was their home, their friend, their mother, their queen. But present, present couldn't see. Present's eyes were only fixed on money, like racehorses with blinds covering the sides of their heads. And that was exactly what present was, running straight ahead without awareness of the dead, the dead trees, the dead plants, the dead you, the dead me. Peripheral vision blocked by towering buildings with ads all over. Animals without fur because jackets and rugs are more important. As if we live in the Arctic and depend on our fur to keep us alive. A fashion statement, making us look better, but taking away their lives. 
Man knows without horns and baby animals torn apart from their mothers for souvenirs and a reason for us to remember. All my sisters, all my brothers, are you proud? Are you proud we've turned every cloud dark gray and left mounds of trash in the lakes, the ones we used to call great, but now we call polluted? because of our insufficiency to preserve the treasure of life we have on this planet, and I can't fathom how we stand it. Temperatures rising, sea levels climbing, sun shining and UV rays determine the purpose of the ozone layer, because what we once called a protective layer is now a result of we'll fix it later, and that's what we said for it all. And now we have a retracting Niagara Falls, the populations of animals falling even greater. Because we are hardwired from the moment we're born to constantly want more. We'll rise to the top, even if it means pushing others down a floor. We're busy toying with iPhones and PlayStations 4s. When what we should be reprogramming is our core we call the heart. Because without heart, we cannot begin to embark on a journey we have years or even decades to reach. A point where man understands the pain plants and animals feel. A point where present embraces earth and begins to heal. The wounds it gave of broken bones like cut down trees and scrapes like dried up lakes. It begins in the heart and should be a will, not a would. A point where future can see what present never could. I hope that this poem resonated with you and inspired a little bit of hope. The last line was a point where future can see what present never could. Everyone who is watching this right now and making changes to their daily life to benefit our beautiful home, you are the future, seeing everything that present once ignored. In 10 years, I wouldn't be surprised to see some of the children who started off as eco-team members under Forbes under Forbes 30 under 30, or at the time 100, paving the way and inspiring others just as they did today. Every piece of plastic you pick up and every small action builds up. Speaking in today's event may seem like a small action, but it matters. Now we move to the second part of the presentation. I will pass the imaginary mic back to my colleague, Erica. Destroy the land and it will destroy you, as Maya recited earlier, is only half of the quote. Here's the first half. Look after the land and the land will look after you. It is a powerful quote that highlights the relationship between, um, between humans and the environment. We all have a responsibility to take care of the environment as it provides us resources that we need to survive, like food, water, and air. But beyond basic needs, it supports our well-being. Studies have shown how closely linked our physical and mental health are to nature, so it's important that we reciprocate Earth's generosity by treating it well. There's another quote that has an inspirational message. Jean Goodall once said, you cannot get through a single day without having an impact on the world around you. What you do makes a difference, and you have to decide what kind of difference you want to make. This is a great reminder that we all have the power to create positive change. Everything we do affects the world one way or another, for better or for worse. We get to decide how we want to live our lives and the size of the carbon footprint we leave behind. In our everyday lives, we make decisions like whether to walk or drive to our destination, use plastic bags provided at the counter or bring a reusable bag to the grocery store. Although these decisions seem insignificant, they do actually make a difference in the outcome because it all adds up. You're either contributing to the problem or you're solving it. It's about making the right decisions. We need to start being more conscious about our actions and commit to living sustainably. Activism is crucial now more than ever in the fight against climate change. And by being here today, you are doing just that. We would like to say a final thank you to everyone who helped create the Eco Summit, to all the crew behind the scenes, to the amazing presenters, to our wonderful audience members. The world is such an unpredictable place, but it is comforting to know that there are this many people in the world who are trying to catch the falling pieces. It really makes you wonder if, rather than falling apart, everything might just be falling into place. And with that, the Inspiration event and the 2023 Eco Summit comes to an end. But for many of you, this is only the beginning of your journey to creating a greener future. Thank you. Thank you so much, Maya and Erica. Uh, was, that was wonderful. I think I can speak for 
everyone here in attendance and watching online and say uh, we are all so inspired. And thank you again to all of our eco teams um, as well. I'll just hand it back to Ryan to say a few closing words before we end off here. Thanks, Renee. Thanks to everyone uh, for contributing today. This was such an inspiring event. This was the envision that we had, and we, I think we've nailed it. Thank you so much to all the eco teams that were participating today in our youth advisory uh, committee. Uh, this has um, been, uh, you know, for me, you know, working at eco schools and seeing uh, what it, what is kind of done on a high level uh, is 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 one thing that uh, is, makes it satisfying to come into work every day. But seeing the work that you're doing on this level and sharing your stories today and all the, the best practices that you're doing and all and everything to do with all the Nutra Towers uh, to uh, waste free lunches to um, uh, the gardening. I mean, it was just incredible what I was seeing today. And, and uh, thank you so much for sharing your stories and participating in our program. And thanks to all of you who are attending today, either live or in a recorded version. Uh, we look forward to seeing you again at a future event. And uh, don't forget that our eco um, uh, to, to certify as an eco school, the deadline's coming up in a few months. So uh, please uh, welcome to our platform, participate, um, share what you've done this year. Please share your success with your eco team, with your school community, May 12th deadline. And uh, we will uh, speak to you soon. Uh, thanks again, everyone. And have a great rest of your day and weekend. Thanks again. Thank you again, everyone, for coming. And that is a wrap to our entire three-week Eco Summit. We are so glad to have you join us today. Um, please make sure to access some of our other recorded presentations that will be up uh, a little bit past our, our Eco Summit closing. So we'll leave those up for a little while. So be sure to check those out. And um, thank you again. We will.